and it's, uh, it's, it's cool here. Uh, so anyway, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about, uh, about BIM in the future, and I'm going to put the envelope pretty far, further away. We were talking 10 years, 20 years. Uh, a lot of things I'm going to say here today is maybe not even going to happen. So I really uh, hope you bear with me here. Maybe we can have a lecture again in 30 years, and we can see if you know maybe something went this way. Is it cool? Yes? Good. So, uh, just short uh, who I am. Uh, my name is Daniel. Uh, I'm 36. Uh, I live in Stockholm from Skåne. I like airplanes. Uh, I have a couple of friends, and uh, down in the right corner, uh, somebody is asking me to start making practice to make have a workout. I don't know what they're trying to. I'm getting fat here for my BIM usage. Uh, I've been working with BIM now for uh, at least 15 to 16 years. I uh, started out with Free Studio 2.0, went to CadWorks, I did Revit 1.1, uh, all this, and, uh, and I made myself an architect, and uh, these are some of the projects we're working on. Uh, Global Arena. Uh, Veterinary School of uh, Uppsala, and this is the NKS 360,000 square meters of uh, hospital with 2.2 uh, uh, billion parameters synced in real time. It's a big project. And uh, along the way, I, I picked up some issues, I picked up some knowledge, uh, I picked up some uh, trends, and I'm trying to, you know, give you some of those uh, directions here, you know, what we're, what we're looking at. So uh, I can ask some questions afterwards as well if you're interested. To know more about this. So, uh, BIM in the future. Uh, what's happening? The future is here, and BIM innovation is exploding. Uh, there's something called Revit. Uh, you know, we already have today the uh, Rhino program, Revit Design. People are trying to, uh, they're really trying to, to uh, get the fruits from this, uh, from this uh, <coughs> uh, technology. So, just to recap, to get us started, uh, uh, you've seen this thousand times, uh, we started uh, doing uh, 2D drawings uh, and 2D CAD a couple of years ago in the 80s and one of these days somebody said, you know what, we can start uh, doing 3D models, in, doing a CAD in, in, in the said direction, right? And then one of these days somebody said, why don't we put some information on this model and we get 4D, 5D, 3D models, right? Yes, silence is good because everybody agrees, right? And uh, right now everybody's talking about collaboration. How could we collaborate between disciplines in, in, in the market? That's the only thing people are talking about today. And uh, it's not really finished yet. We have a lot of uh, companies doing uh, different initiatives about this. Um, uh, but uh, we're getting there. Parallel to this, uh, our computers have been doing exactly the same thing. When the internet, you know the internet, and when it was uh, invented, somebody said, uh, I want to surf on a Macintosh and a PC, and they have to make the collaboration work, right? That's all, you know, so you can surf on more computers. So they figured it out how to do it, they made some standards, and now everything is about cloud computing. So they did the, the trip before us. And the thing I'm, I'm going to give to you right now, I think that BIM will go into the cloud. Can I give a hands up? How many believe this? One, two, uh, three. I mean, if you go to the bank today, you, you don't send a file, right? So you like you kind of log into the bank. If you go to Facebook, you don't send your file in with the Facebook status, right? You do it in the cloud. Yeah. So this is where the whole lecture is going to be about BIM in the cloud. So, all right. <clears throat> and when something goes to the cloud, uh, you're entering a world of uh, of uh, of openness. If you think about it, uh, before when you, you surf the web, you, uh, you, know, you surf the web pages and, and you were reading uh, published information like a newspaper. Today you're working with Dropbox, YouTube, you're actually programming the internet, pretty much like a huge computer. So this is what we have to look at. We're actually like, we're going to build uh, BIM models in, in the web. And the, the trick is how we're going to do it. <clears throat> if you go to the cloud, you know, uh, we're going to something we call the open world, right? An open world is uh, the world is free of sharing, transparency, all this, and I'm going to try to try to give this. Uh, a, I want to start off here so we can go down to the details later. There's a man called Don Pescott who made a who made a little lecture about the four principles of the open world, and I'm going to take these four principles and I'm going to talk about them in a BIM context. Am I speaking too fast? How many is falling asleep? Nobody. Good. Two, three, I see one here. Okay. So, what about it? What's the first principle? Well, the first principle is uh, collaboration. Everybody here is using Dropbox, right? 
Yes, everybody is using CAD files and, and all this. And uh, this is what we will of course come to the second paper. And uh, what we're going to see in the future is uh, BIM is going to be not only between architects, not only between engineers, it's going to be between architects and, and acoustics or environmental specialists. Maybe we're going to have the, the, the stakeholders. Uh, it's going to be other disciplines coming in. You're going to start sharing information, BIM data between projects. Uh, that is not uh, the usual consultants, right? Game developers, we're seeing actually getting into the BIM world today. Uh, uh, students, uh, anybody wants to play or now uh, invited to the 3D model, which means uh, you don't have like an agreement paper signed, you just share information, right? And this is uh, going to put new demands on security, knowledge, and how you work with the model, right? Especially in the cloud. <coughs> um, also, when you uh, work uh, with collaboration in real time, uh, you're going to start working uh, with instant files. You know, it's not going to be files anymore, it's going to be working like on the bank in real time. If you change your wall, uh, on the 3D model, it's going to be changed all over the place, all over the world, in one second. You're not going to save, there's going, going to be no versions, right? You understand? We had this today in some, some software, uh, Vasari on the iPad and, and stuff like that. <coughs> um, uh, and the second principle here is uh, transparency. This is a really interesting one, because we have so much beam information in the models today, that we now have to look at what can we actually share. Uh, if we don't share everything, people are going to get upset. You understand? Uh, today there's a culture of, oh, this is my 3D file, and I have these parameters and so forth, and we can't give it to you, but it's not going to happen. You have to share everything. Share a 3D model, it's going to be open on the internet, anybody can access it, your friend can access it, your mother can access the file, and they're going to ask for any information. The public is going to look at your 3D file in the future and see if it's a good model. You see the reason here? It's total openness. This is a revolutionary to people of the, of the before IT age. Uh, the people of the pre after IT age uh, is kind of like, you know, common sense, right? Uh, and if you have a, a product that is 100% transparent, you have to be fit. You have to really, you know, you're standing there naked. You have to have a really good, uh, really good uh, product. So anybody can come in any minute and optimize your model and send an email. Oh, I did an energy efficient uh, uh, energy efficient uh, operation, I save you 5% of, uh, of energy if you do like this and then you can directly see how much money you will save the client not even if you have the, the mission to do it is it too complicated or should I? oh it's cool, yeah, just let me know uh, the third principle is sharing, it's uh, nothing more like it uh, we see this all over, in an open world sharing is everything Look at open platforms, we have Android, we have a Linux system from IBM, we have a WordPress, it's free systems, anybody can contribute with their own software. You can do any, any, any plugin to Revit and you can share it for free, anybody can use it, right? It's all about sharing, share your knowledge, share your, uh, share your uh, intellectual, you know, share your families uh, or uh, 3D objects. Uh, <coughs> And uh, there's no really no reason in the future to actually own your 3D model. I'm there again. Why should you want? Why do you want to have a 3D model? Why do you want to have it on your hard drive? Or, or do you want to? Why do you really want to have a 3D model? It's not your house. <laughs> why do you want to keep the 3D model? You know, this is really uh, one of the big issues here. <clears throat> also, uh, there, there are today forums about sharing knowledge, uh, tools, uh, software is going to be free, uh, etc. The last and fourth principle in the open world is uh, empowerment. Now with the uh, cloud uh, beam information, or the people are going to come together in special teams. Now we have technology that NASA, NASA uh, provided us, so now we can start using it. Small companies can compete with big companies. If you're a team of seven architects, uh, Constellation can have the same uh, ability, same power, same technology as the Scanska PM. It doesn't really matter. Everything comes down to your innovation in beam and your parameters. So you're actually using the, the, the cloud to get your, your team stronger, the 3D model stronger, right? <coughs> Alright, um, so 